More drama in Congress today. At a hearing on censorship, this is unbelievable, Debbie Wasserman Schultz tried to censor Robert F. Kennedy Jr. You can't make this up. A, tr a hearing on censorship. Wasserman Schultz, whose hair always looks wet, can't get over that, uh, tried to keep him from testifying at the beginning of this hearing, tried to pass a motion that would get him censored from testifying at a censorship hearing. That didn't pass. They had enough pe people on the roll call vote to say, no, no, we're going to go forward with this testimony. Sorry, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, you're not going to allow this to happen. We will, in fact, hear from Mr. Kennedy. So that failed, but she didn't give up. That was just the first bit of drama. Watch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we respectfully requested that you rescind Mr. Kennedy's invitation to be, appear here due to his repeated and very recent statements that spread dangerous anti-Semitic and anti-Asian conspiracy theories and attempted to move into executive session because House rules prohibit public testimony that degrades or defames people. You floated a baseless conspiracy theory that the coronavirus was bioengineered to target Caucasians and black people, but to spare Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese people. Mr. Kennedy, your bizarre, unproven claim echoes that same historic slander of labeling Jews and Chinese people as a race, and that Jews, and in this case Chinese people, somehow managed to avoid a deadly illness that targets other groups for death. You do see that, yes or no? You're misstating. No, 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 no. Uh, you I, are... quoted, I quoted what you said earlier, and it, it is directly what you said. So just ask me. Uh, no, yes no. I, was, I was describing an NIH-funded study. No, 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 you didn't cite any. I was, as, I was describing an NIH-funded study by Cleveland Clinic Reclaiming scientists. Reclaiming my time. Reclaiming my time. You did not you, reference. Reclaiming my time. Published in USC Mr. Medical, Chairman, which is, is one of... The time is mine. I'm reclaiming it. Please ask the witness to stop talking. You asked me a question. Reclaiming. I, let me, allow me to answer time. my question. Sorry, we're not going to we're not going to let you answer your question. So just to be clear, Kennedy is saying that that he was citing a study which shows susceptibility of certain races to COVID-19. Wasserman Schultz is saying, no, 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 you're making that up. You did not. And then uh, and, and then Congressman Massey uh, had to just drop the hammer. Um, he's like, wait a second, here are the government funded studies and the Pfizer study that Mr. Kennedy was referring to. Watch this moment. You did not cite any study like you are citing here now during that conversation. You referenced no study at all. You simply labeled Jews and Chinese people as a race. And you also said that somehow they managed to avoid a deadly illness that targets other groups for death. You don't see that. You're trying to rewrite history here. So Mr. You'll... Chairman, I have unanimous consent request. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for UC. I ask unanimous consent to introduce into the record a study that Mr. Kennedy just referenced. Uh, new insights into genetic susceptibility of COVID-19. Uh, the main body said that they investigated genetic susceptibility to COVID-19 by examining DNA polymorphism in ACE2 and TM. PRSS2, those are receptors for COVID in 81,000 human genomes, and they found unique genetic susceptibility across different populations. I have another uh, document that I'd like to ask unanimous consent. Without objection? To submit, and this is uh, from the FDA, FDA Review of Efficacy and Safety of Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 Vaccine. This is dated December 10th, 2020. And it shows that the uh, Pfizer trial and the USDA broke down the effectiveness of the vaccine into seven different racial categories because this was also a concern of theirs. And it would frankly be delinquent not to study the, uh, the effects across the different But Mr. Races. Kennedy. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love yeah. when just people bring facts like... It, the hyperbole. She's like, you know, you lie and you spread conspiracy theories, Mr. Kennedy, about race. You're making it up. Well, and, and the point in the the minute he starts to get to where he's going to make sense and clear it up. No, 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 no. I'm reclaiming my time. I don't want to hear it. You're going to you're going to say something and yeah. make me look bad. Shut up. Yeah, I'm going to censor you so you can't respond. I'm reclaiming my time. I'm going to make a statement, not let you to respond, not allow you to respond and explain yourself because we live in, a, in an era where you can't have any kind of a nuanced conversation at all. He's like, no, no, let me explain. I was, I was citing an NIH study, a government-funded study. No, you were not. Congressman Massey is like, um, can I introduce these studies that he was referring to into the public record <laughs> as part of this testimony? The CDC and Pfizer documents that corroborate Mr. Kennedy's statements around COVID and race? 
They're entered into the record. So after that drama, it was allowed to move forward, but not before Jeffrey Epstein, the Jeffrey Epstein, let me say it again, not before the Jeffrey Epstein funded Democrat, Stacey Plaskett, tried to derail it again. Uh, you know, she, by the way, also tried to have journalist Matt Taibbi jailed for his journalism. She, of course, gave Epstein a hundred million dollar tax break after he was a registered sex offender and took campaign donations. So she's that kind of person. She tried to derail this testimony once again, trying to jump in and trying to say that he should be censored and not be allowed to speak for any length of time. Listen. Excuse me, point of order. I know that witnesses usually have five minutes. I see 10 minutes on the board. Is it going to be 10 minutes? We'll for give him five witness? minutes, but we're, we're pretty lax with this. Uh, we'll let him go for we are? a little. Yeah, we, I've seen you ham, 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 gavel down on quite a number of witnesses. We've given senators and former Democrat members of Congress and all kinds He's of folks. He's neither. He's neither. I'm just saying in past history. Okay, in okay. But we'll, Let's we'll give, just we'll watch give you, the time for all the witnesses. And then. if you want to cut him off and censor him some more, you're welcome to do it. Oh, that's not my job. That's that's your job. Why don't you threaten a witness so that they can Mr. not Kennedy, want to be Mr. a witness? Mr. Kennedy is recognized for his opening statement. We'll give him five minutes, more or less, and then we'll move to the next one. Mr. Kennedy, go right ahead. So the continued trying to censor him at a censorship trial or a censorship hearing. Unbelievable. Like this is what we've come to in this country where we cannot, if we disagree with you, we cannot listen to you. We cannot hear you. You cannot speak. You will be deplatformed. You will be blocked, banned, taken offline. Um, then if that wasn't enough, she tried to level a whole pile of bullshit against Kennedy and watch his response to that. You tried to associate me a moment ago with the replacement theory, which is racist. No, I did not say you the time belongs the to the gentleman from I the said my colleagues. The time theory. belongs to the gentleman from I denounced that theory. It is racist, and I have never endorsed it or had any association with it. Our film on a medical point... By the Medical way, Bill apartheid? Buxton, Bill Buxton, who is the black CDC official who ultimately exposed the Tuskegee experiment, tried for years and years to appeal to, to CDC to stop it for 40 years. Finally, he got relief by walking into my uncle's office in the building next door. Teddy held hearings and ended the experiment. I remember that very well. And to say that that... I, I wrote a, I created a film that encourages blacks not to get adequate medical care is just completely abhorrent. If the, Don't if the, use my it's words, the witness's sir. time. Do not the, censor the witness. I'm not the, censoring the, the witness. Yeah. I'm not the, censoring the witness. He's still if, talking. It is the, it's, I it's my time and I've given it to the witness. Do not censor him. If I'm the, not censoring him. If the views that you and others have applied to me, I've attributed to me, if they were actually true, I can see why I shouldn't be able to testify here today. Those are not true. These are defamations and mal malignancies that are used to censor me to prevent people from listening to the actual things that I'm saying. And I think, ranking member, that we should have a real conversation rather than an exchange of ad hominem attacks. Hmm. Yeah. So finally, then they did let Kennedy speak. Uh, and allowed him to actually give his statement. And he had prepared remarks written down. Like he was coming in here with my, you know, his prepared remarks that he had written out and was ready to, to speak for five to 10 minutes. And then he just threw, threw them out. He's like, uh, no, I'm going to go a whole different route. And this is what I want to talk about. The very censorship that you're, you're trying to foist on top of me right now at a censorship hearing. Watch. That is why the First Amendment's important. Debate, congenial, respectful debate, is the, is the fertilizer, it's the water, it's the sunlight for our democracy. We need to be talking to each other. Now, there, this is a letter that many of you signed, many of my fellow Democrats. I've spent my life in this party, I've devoted my life to the values of this party. There's 102 people signed this. This itself, is evidence of the problem that this hearing was convened to address. 
this is an attempt to censor a censorship hearing. The, the, the charges in this, and, and by the way, censorship is antithetical to our party. It was, it was appalling to my father, to my uncle, to FDR, to Harry Truman, to jo Thomas Jefferson, as the chairman referred to. It is the basis for democracy. It sets us apart from all of the previous forms of government. We need to be able to talk, and, and the First Amendment was not written for easy speech. It was written for the speech that nobody likes you for. Yeah. And I see a lot of people in the chat. I'm just curious what you guys think about this, because a lot of people saying, yeah, this is not this is not that party anymore. You know, this is not an anti-war Democratic Party. This is not your this is not your uncle's party anymore. Not at all. It's a totally different Democratic Party. I don't know what it is. I don't even know why you'd want to identify as a Democrat to run on that even on that ticket. The only thing you could hope to do is maybe to take it over and completely gut the damn thing. But good luck with that. You see who's running the Democratic Party. You know, who's at the front of it right now. So, Kennedy had a, uh, really laid this out here at the end, and I thought this was a good way for him to, to, to lay out the second part of his speech here. And I just want to play this. Um, and I thought, it was, I thought it was really, really good. Listen. I was censored not just by the Democratic administration. I was censored by the Trump administration. I was the first person censored by, the, as the chairman pointed out, by the Biden administration two days after it came into office. It ordered a truthful, and by the way, they had to invent a new word called malinformation to, to, to censor people like me. They, there was no misinformation on my Instagram account. Everything I put on that account was cited and sourced to peer-reviewed publications or government databases. Nobody have, has ever pointed to a single piece of misinformation that I publish. I was removed for something they called malinformation. Malinformation is information that is true, but is inconvenient to the government that they don't want people to hear. And, it, and that's antithetical to the values of our country. After I announced my presidency, it became more difficult for people to censor me outright. So now I'm subject to this new form of censorship, which is called targeted propaganda, where people apply pejoratives like anti-vax. I've never been anti-vaccine, but everybody in this room probably believes that I have been, because that's the prevailing narrative. Anti-Semitism, racism, these are, are the most appalling, disgusting pejoratives, and they're applied to me to silence me because people don't want me to have that conversation about the war, about groceries, about inflation, about the war on the middle class in this country that we need to be having. Yeah, it's too inconvenient, isn't it? And so I was asked during an interview earlier today, uh, whether I thought he stood a chance of becoming president. And I, I don't know. I don't believe that the deep state will allow him to become president. I mean, look, and the media machine. When I say the deep state, I mean the absolute entrenched permanent government in Washington, D.C. Well, I don't, it, I don't see it, it happening. You have too many fail-safes in place by the establishment. He'll never get past the DNC. He will never be accepted by the DNC to even get the nomination to go to be president. Right. Right. And so then what happens? He becomes a third party candidate and they absolutely do not want that to happen because it would be a, I'm going to call it a reverse Perot. Well, well no, and, actually, and look what they do, too. A, wouldn't even be a reverse Perot because, well, you yeah. know, a reverse. Well, because Perot I mean, here, if you think about it, the reason Bill Clinton won is because of Perot um, and be George H.W. Bush. It's arguable. I mean, the numbers, I think, bear that out that that Bill Clinton would not have won had Ross Perot not split the vote. Uh, and siphoned votes away from George H.W. Bush. So in this way, if he runs as a third party candidate, there's no way, there's no way, well, who knows the deep state, but there's no, I mean, there's no way Biden wins if, if he then becomes a third party candidate. I just don't see it happening. Well, but the thing is, like, think about this. What happens is the, the, the debate 
uh, company is private as well. So what they did in order to keep like the Green Party, like Ralph Nader, this happened to him. He was kicked off the debate stage. They said, OK, now if you're not polling at this percentage, you can't be in the debates. And then when some uh, third parties got to that percentage, they're like, oh, wait, we raised the percentage. So that's all private and, and they can do whatever they want. So if he is not polling at a certain percentage, they'll say, oh, he can't be on the debate stage and nobody's going to get to hear from him. So nobody will know that he's actually running. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's you remember what happened, uh, you know. We know what happened to Bernie Sanders, but I'm just talking, forget what your politics are about Bernie Sanders. Remember when he was running and winning and doing very well against Biden and beating Kamala Harris in the polls, MSNBC, a whistleblower at MSNBC came forward, a producer, and was told, to, told the world that MSNBC was told not to put Bernie Sanders on their air because they wanted Biden. And when they put graphics up on the screen... They pretended like Andrew Yang. They pretended like Bernie Sanders weren't even candidates. On the screen instead was Kamala Harris, whose numbers were lower than theirs, and yet they didn't even put them on the screen as candidates that were running for office. That's how corrupt the, this, the you know the mainstream media my, is. My my favorite was uh, my favorite was there was uh, one graphic. Uh, man, I, I wish I could find it, but. Uh, where it showed the percentages. I think it was after after the Iowa straw poll or whatever, and like where Bernie had, had got some like 30 percent or something like that. But they basically put the percentages of Biden and Harris as like these really big in these really big graphics with their numbers. Yeah. And then this tiny itty bitty Bernie Sanders graphic with the higher number was over to the side just to, just to make <laughs> it look like, you know, visually like he had got less, even though the number was was higher. Yeah, so, this yeah. little time. Yeah. Way over in the corner. And it was a proportional thing too, wasn't it? It was like the scaling of it was like the size. Yeah, of yeah. The like font. Everybody else's yeah. picture was big, and their 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 fifteen percent was huge, and you know the comma was like twelve percent was huge, and then Bernie Sanders had this tiny little picture and a tiny little graphic with 31%. his number, which was the greater. The, yeah, thirty one percent. It was itty bitty. <sighs> this is the corruption. So I just I'll I'll ask you guys in the chat, like let me know in the comments here on Rumble and on YouTube and Twitter, what do you guys think? I mean, do you think that they will allow? First of all, do, will they allow Trump to run? I mean, we see what's happening there. Will they allow a pro-peace, um, anti-war candidate to run and win I, I, on the Democratic side? I mean, you see what's happening. You literally had the leaders of the Democratic Party today at this hearing in the House trying to censor the son of former Attorney General of the United States of America who was assassinated in the, in the, in the House of Representatives. Just think about that well, for a minute. One thing about this, Bernie Sanders isn't even anti-war and he couldn't win. So like right, he's, right. he's more like pro-worker, yeah. right? So yeah. they don't want you to be pro-worker or or anti-war. So if you're any of those things, and Kennedy's both, yeah. by the way. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Well, I, you know, yeah, who knows? But anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this. Um, there's, it, it was amazing to watch this hearing today. There were a lot of other great moments from this hearing. I couldn't play them all, but uh, it was worth watching today if you get a chance to watch the whole thing. It's amazing to hear from some of the testimony of the other people, the journalists who were also censored at this, um, who were there and were testifying at this hearing. It was pretty amazing. Uh, but I liked how he wrapped it up when finally asked at the very end, you know, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Kennedy, what, how do you feel about uh, censorship? You know, what what is it? What does that say about a democracy? And he said, you know, if, if you are the ones we've never in history had people who were censoring other people um, who were not wanting to control you, it leads to total, you know, totalitarianism. It's 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 in keeping with totalitarianism. George Orwell warned us about this. Aldous Huxley warned us about this. That's exactly what this is. Um, and so when the Democrats are trying to do that, that should be a wake up call for all of us. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.